don't always live up to what we say about ourselves. Uh -huh. I say with deep love and, and with pain and lament in my heart that the land of the free is the incarceration capital of the world. No other nation comes close. Not in terms of sheer numbers, not in terms of the percentage of their people who are locked up. We warehouse 25% of the world's prisoners. We're 5% of the world's population. How is it that we in America warehouse 25% of the world's prisoners. How is it that we have a greater percentage of our black bodies locked up in jail in America than did apartheid South Africa at the height of apartheid? Jesus. Most of them are there for non-violent drug-related offenses. In America's so-called war on drugs. Public policy choice. About 40 years ago or so, we, we started building prisons and prison construction continued to rise regardless of crime rates because the issue is not public safety, the issue is somebody's banking on another person's bond.
Because when prophets clash with prophets, some things begin to happen. This is how you know I'm back to preach. I'm going to tell you three things and then I'm done. <laughs> when prophets collide with prophets, first thing to witness is the assertion of propaganda. Oh. The text says that they simply let this slave girl free. In other words, she got some power. Mm -hmm. And her owners got mad. And they go to the managers. Look at the text. They go to the judges. They go to the politicians. Mm -hmm. And they begin to say, these men are disturbing our city. Mm -hmm. Isn't that an amazing statement? <laughs> All they do is set one little slave girl yeah. free. Right. Okay. Yeah. They say, these men are disturbing the whole city. I wonder what's so scary about one girl who's been set free. Come on. I wonder what is it, what is it so scary about a woman who has found her power and her voice that they would say that they are disturbing the whole city. I, I, I want you to understand as you talk about Amendment 4, as you talk about giving felons their franchise, you really are talking about upsetting the apple. Right. You are talking about speaking the power. Dr. King understood this even when he was just 28 years old, preached that message that we ought to lift up. You know, he went to the March on Washington and stood before the Lincoln Memorial in 1963. Everybody talks about that, but you ought to go back and read the speech that he gave before the Lincoln Memorial in 1957. 28 years old when he said that we give us the battle. He said if you give us the battle, we will correct the wrongs in the South. Dr. King understood way back then that the reason why people are engaged in voter suppression is because a diverse electorate has public policy implications. Right. right. Yes. 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 Who gets the vote is not simply a matter of complexion, it's a matter of direction. Right. And all of us can get to the polls, right. it impacts what actually happens in our great democracy. Yes. Right. Something happens when you let a slave girl go free. Yes. 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 So I, I, I just came tonight. Couple years ago, our, our church, because I'm so focused on this issue of mass incarceration, our church launched an expungement clinic yeah. wow. in our church. And um, we used our spiritual and moral authority to convene the judges, district attorney, public defendants, the clerks, even the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, because they have the crime records. We created a command center in the banquet hall of the church. And we did in one day what usually takes 120 days. We told the bureaucrats you can do it if you will. Come on. All right. We eliminated all of the fees and we announced in Atlanta that anybody who had an arrest record, hear me now, an arrest record, that you could get your record expunged at the other days of Baptist church. And so we made an announcement and hundreds of people filled our city. I looked across the sanctuary that Saturday morning, preachers, and that was one of the proudest moments in our ministry. Because as I looked across the sanctuary, it occurred to me that everybody in church that day had a record. Then again, as I think about it, that's true every Sunday I'm here.
gentleman walked up to me, Reverend Pritchard, he looked like he was about in his mid-50s, the late 50s. Well dressed, looked like he didn't have any concerns in the world. He said, Reverend, I want to thank you for the event you had the other night, that expungement event the other day. I, I said, thank you very much because I'm on television and folk come up. I'm happy to greet people, but I was trying to get to my Saturday errands. He said, no, hold on, Reverend, hold on. He said, you don't understand. I'm not just thinking you in general. He said, you expunged my Reverend. I said, God bless you, Reverend. He said, no, you, you, you need to understand that, that prior to expunging my record, I, I was able to get a job, but I was never able to get a job that is commensurate with my skill set. So every time you expunge my record, hear me tonight, and I'm only talking 